okay hello everyone the last time we studied about the uh, finite element formulation for 2d problem and in that case uh, we have seen how to obtain the strain displacement matrix uh, b and um, then we'll get the complete relation epsilon is equal to bq so this already we have seen for the triangular element for 1d linear bar element also and similarly we have found out this for the uh, four node uh, rectangular element how to obtain the strain displacement matrix and then this is the displacement vector okay so in this important thing is that the this jacobian matrix and in this session we'll see how to obtain this jacobian matrix and once we are able to find out the jacobian matrix then um, it is possible to relate the um, um, xy coordinate system with the zeta eta that is the local coordinate system so last time we have seen that uh, since this is the u and v these are the functions of uh, n which is function of zeta eta so directly we cannot differentiate this with u with respect to the n1 so we have to use the chain rule of partial differentiation and um, after using this chain rule of partial differentiation um, we could relate um, means we could find out the u um, uh, in terms of n which is a function of zeta eta so we got this in that process we got this the jacobian matrix and this jacobian matrix uh, um, is a scale factor that I already I mentioned which relates the uh, xy coordinates with the zeta eta coordinates. Now our uh, objective is how to get this uh, Jacobian matrix. So we know this relation um, that is uh, x. Um, this x geometry is approximated by using a shape function um, n1, n2, n3 and n4. So x is given as summation of ni xi and y is given as summation of ni yi means x is equal to if it is a four node uh, rectangular element then x is equal to n1 x1 plus n2 x2 plus n3 x3 plus n4 x4. So we have this relation and uh, by knowing these relations uh, we can find out um, deba x by deba zeta definitely we can differentiate this um, with respect to the zeta and eta coordinates because here n1 n2 n3 and n4 these are the shape functions which are the obtained in terms of the natural coordinate system so this jacobian matrix here in general can be so if you differentiate this okay so this term if you differentiate this term which is the first term of Jacobian matrix that we denoted as J11. So, deba x by deba zeta will be equal to the deba n1 by deba zeta into x1 plus deba n2 by deba zeta into x2 plus deba n3 by deba zeta x3 and deba n4 by deba zeta x4. Or I can write down the summation of deba n i by deba zeta xi where i goes from 1 to 4. So just see here, same equation that just I told that is the, this deba n1 by deba zeta, n2 by deba zeta, deba n3 by deba zeta and deba n4 by deba zeta. So this equation is differentiated with respect to This is because uh, we know that uh, this n1, n2 and n3, these are the functions of zeta eta because these are the shape functions which are x phase in terms of the natural coordinate. Now similarly you can find the second term, this term we can call this as a j12 deba y deba zeta means differentiating this y term with respect to the zeta eta and um, again this term and this term. All these four terms we can find out by differentiating this uh, x and y with respect to the zeta and eta. So after differentiating this means after these equations, okay. So these equations by differentiating this n1, all this with respect to safe functions, we get the next terms. 
okay so delta n1 by delta zeta you will get this so when you are differentiating with respect to the zeta then eta will be constant eta term will be a constant so you will get this first term so delta n1 by delta zeta will be a what so it will be a minus 1 minus eta by 4 that's what we got here similarly this n2 n3 n4 all the terms by differentiating with respect to zeta eta where all these terms are which are appearing here okay all these terms and next wise all these terms we will get here now then we can get okay and uh, from where you will get this x1 x2 and x3 and x4 coordinates so these are different definitely depends on the when you do the mapping so here if you see this parent element is mapped which is expressed in terms of the zeta eta coordinate which is mapped with respect to the <coughs> master element mapped element i will so call this as a mapped element so this is a parent element this is a mapped element so parent element it is possible to map this in a uh, xy coordinate system even the if you use the quadratic shape function then you will get the curved boundaries also so all these are um, all these this one this is x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 x4 y4 means in this equation this x1 x2 x3 x4 these coordinates you will get from here x1 x2 x3 and x4 similarly for y similarly for y y1 y2 y3 y4 this also you will get um, from this this is y1 y2 y3 and y4 so after putting this means these values you got from here and these values from the mapped element corresponding uh, x y coordinates we can put it here and accordingly you will get the coefficients of this Jacobian matrix so in this way you can calculate the all coefficients of the Jacobian matrix and you will get the Jacobian matrix so once you get the Jacobian matrix then it is possible to um, obtain the um, relationship between the x y coordinate and zeta eta coordinate ah, here we have seen that earlier that if you know the relationship between the zeta and x coordinate eta and y coordinate then uh, you will get this Jacobian matrix and uh, you can transform um, f, of, f of x y dx dy to the f of zeta d, zeta eta determinant of j d zeta d eta. So here the most important thing is that this whatever Jacobian matrix we have calculated here that we need to substitute here and then we can transform from this to the x y coordinate to the zeta eta coordinate. So this is most important uh, part because the Jacobian is a scale factor so whenever you are switching from the x y coordinate to the zeta eta coordinate so that is related by the jacobian matrix so so here in this case uh, from the previous this once you calculate this j11 j12 j21 j22 just that we have seen then all the coefficients of jacobian matrix you will get and even these values also we have seen how to find out the so in this case once we get this you can take the inverse of that jacobian matrix and then again uh, all these values we will get so once we get this all this will be a numerical values and for computer to multiply with these numerical values is uh, very easy so these matrices will be simply multiplied and uh, accordingly you will get the um, this strain displacement matrix relations so it only depends on the how you find out the um, means everything is known shape function x y coordinates which is taken from the mesh geometry and um, once you calculate this uh, then um, it is possible uh, to evaluate the complete uh, strain displacement matrix okay so now we'll move to the next part that is the now we have found out the strain displacement matrix in earlier uh, uh, videos okay okay here we have found out this uh, strain displacement matrix and the next step is the find out the stress strain relations so we know this epsilon is equal to um, bq now we have to find out the stress is equal to strain e epsilon that is the d epsilon d is the material property matrix 
okay so we'll see that next part so <coughs> this is here okay now just see that we have found out the b matrix and q matrix in earlier uh, discussions so where uh, sigma is equal to e epsilon e epsilon is nothing but the epsilon is nothing but the um, this bq okay epsilon is nothing but the this bq this is bq is epsilon and what is this d d is for one dimensional case we write down this is a sigma is equal to e epsilon but for the two dimensional case this e which is material property actually here that material property matrix is nothing but the d and for the plane stress condition this is the material property matrix okay so this is the d matrix for the plane stress condition now once you know this then we write down this uh, total potential energy total potential energy is uh, uh, strain multiplied by one half stress strain multiplied by stress okay so this is nothing but the epsilon transpose and this is a stress which is nothing but this okay d epsilon so this is the um, strain energy and this is the work potential so this is the strain energy and this is the work potential so in work potential that is the work uh, done external work okay which is nothing but the body force vector traction force and the point load so this is nothing but the total work done externally or total forces acting on the on that particular structure domain okay and this is the potential this is the strain energy so strain energy is uh, one half um, strain matrix multiplied by the stress matrix so this is nothing but the stress because this dbq okay so epsilon or dbq means d into epsilon so d into epsilon basically this is what this is a strain into stress so one half strain matrix into stress matrix so this stress is not stress is nothing but the dbq or d epsilon this also we can call this as a epsilon okay so d epsilon because epsilon is nothing but the bq so d epsilon this can be further written as because epsilon is nothing but what it is a bq so this is the epsilon transpose that will be a q transpose b transpose this is a d and again this epsilon is bq so this we can expand it further like this so here we define these terms okay here we define that is the b d b integral of db we define this the element stiffness matrix this already we have seen while deriving the uh, element stiffness matrix for the 1D linear bar element. So the procedure is same here, you might have understood now. So this is the K matrix. So whole thing can be written as one half Q transpose. This is written as uh, because this is for one element and if you go for the N number of elements. So we denote this as a capital Q for the total structure this is the k this is the global stiffness matrix this is the element stiffness matrix once you assemble the element stiffness matrix you will get the global stiffness matrix so that's why it is a capital q and this is a q which is this q so small q's are for the element level and capital q is for the complete assembly of the small q matrix okay once you assemble if the board suppose there are 10 and 10 number of elements and if you assemble the q vector for the 10 number of elements then you will get the capital q similarly this is the if you have the element stiffness matrix for one element as the uh, small k then for the 10 number of elements once you assemble this element stiffness matrix you will get the capital k matrix and then like this so this pi k and then applying the principle of minimum potential energy you can uh, differentiate with respect to the each nodal variable and you will get the um, equation final equation that is the k into x famous equation or k into q is equal to f so this equation you will get so this is we understood now the finite element formulation for the 2d element completely by using the four node rectangular elements so with this we complete this finite and then we'll see if you some problem practice based on this and this will help you uh, how to solve the problems of the 2D elements. Whole problem we will not be able to solve, but we will see how to solve the its um, few components. Okay.
Thank you. We will continue in the next video.